Hi guys, so today I am sitting down to do a video all about how I have packed for my last few trips, how to pack in a carry-on, and some tips and tricks that will make packing when you are gonna travel so much easier. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed lately that I took a trip that was a 10-day trip, and then I took a trip that was a four-day trip, and I have two trips coming up that are just a two or three-day trip that I'm gonna need to pack and know what I'm bringing and try and bring as little stuff as I possibly can while still feeling confident and good in all the choices that I brought. First couple things that I'm gonna talk about is the suitcases, luggage, whatever you wanna say. And I have too many suitcases, my husband and I both do, so, and we share them. We have a large one, we have a smaller carry-on one, and we have a duffel bag that are our main ones that we use. And with that, it is a good diversity of if I need to check a bag, I use the larger bag. If I need to carry on, I can use the smaller one. And most times, honestly, when I am carrying on, I need both the small one and the duffel bag. So to me, it to me is just a great suitcase brand that lasts forever. They are well made. They will fix them if anything goes wrong. It's just a really, really good piece, but they are an investment piece. They are not inexpensive. So you can find whatever kind of luggage you want and you like. The key things are you want to have one larger one, one smaller one, and one duffel bag style. Now, as far as how I determine what I am going to pack, one of the things that I do that has always been super helpful for me is I actually take a notebook, whichever one I currently have on my desk, and I write out, let's say for a four day trip, I'll say Monday, I'll write travel day. And then if I'm going out that night for dinner, I'll write dinner night. And then Tuesday and what I'm doing, just a rough idea, it doesn't have to be an exact, and then Tuesday night, what I'll be doing. And it gives me an idea of whether I need more casual things, more dressy things, or whatever outfits will actually work in for those scenarios. And then I can look at it and determine like, if I'm going somewhere during the day that's really casual, how can I take that outfit and then make it into a nighttime outfit, maybe by just changing a couple things up, like my shoes or my jewelry or adding a little jacket or things like that. Then I take, I have a clothing rack here behind me. Any kind is good. I actually also have a roll away one that you can just fold down. If you don't have the space to keep one up all the time, you can fold it down and pop it up when you know you're gonna be going away somewhere. And I actually then go through, starting with the first day that I am leaving and all the way in through the end, and I put the outfits in the outfits that I'm going to be wearing. So my travel outfit, I hang it all together and put it in one area. Then the next day I'll put whatever my daytime outfit is. And then I put whatever items I would need to go with that for if I need to switch it into nighttime. A great example of these is recently when I went to Las Vegas, I needed things that during the day I could go walk around and do some shopping and maybe go to the pool, but then I also needed something for nighttime to either go out to dinner or a show or whatever we might be doing at night. And most times the easiest way to do this was to bring a fun pair of shoes. I keep my colors very basic and I keep my pieces very basic when I need to do a carry-on as far as traveling. So I actually go through and pick a pair of jeans that will work both during the day, let's say possibly, and then something that I can put a heel on and wear at nighttime. Now, if it's really warm during the day, I might bring a pair of jean shorts and then those jeans that I could transition with the same top into nighttime. Now, the next step that I personally do is I actually go through and try on all of the outfits as I'm going to wear them. And I personally also tend to take a photo of it just in my mirror, in my selfie, just a quick photo so I can remember what it looked like and how I put it together. But trying them on is key because most times what we end up overpacking are things that are last minute thoughts because we haven't tried it on. And we say these jeans with this top and this shoe and then we're sitting there and we're packing and we're like, oh, maybe that other shirt would look better with it. When you try them on, you know what it feels like on. I had a couple outfits this last time when I went to Las Vegas that when I went and tried them on a couple days beforehand, I was like, mm, that's not the look I was going for here. So I switched it up. So before I left, I had switched it into something that I felt more comfortable and I didn't waste any packing space on something that I might not end up wearing. Now, another tip or trick that I tend to use is anytime I have clothes that are dry cleaned, when I get them home, I always switch them onto the soft hangers or the um, velvet hangers and I have everything in my closet on those. 
But these hangers I hold on to any time I get something back from the dry cleaner because these are perfect for traveling. You ever notice when you get in a hotel that they never have enough hangers to hang all the items that you want? And or the fact that a lot of times my suitcases both have a hanging area and I want to keep my stuff hanging. I don't necessarily want to fold it because it'll get less wrinkles when it's actually on a hanger. So I go through after I've placed everything on the rack and I've decided what I'm bringing, I've taken my photos, I have the outfit ideas, I go through and switch all of my hangers to these hangers. The other reason I switch to these hangers and not just take my regular ones that aren't going to take up much space, but when I am in a hotel and I have worn something and it is then going into laundry, I throw these away. I don't need them. I have no use for them. So why cause myself to have more space taken up in my suitcase on the way back when I can just use these and toss them away? Then after I have my hanging items all set up and I also tend to put any like flat shoes or little items I might have that are loose in around those hanging items, then I need to work on my items that are folded items. T-shirts, pajamas, underwear, bras, socks, all of those type of little things, jeans, pants, anything that I would fold that isn't gonna get a seam to it or a harsh crease or anything like that. And how I pack those is I actually use these cubes. They're packing cubes. They are the most intelligent thing ever. I think I got them for like $20, $30 on Amazon. And this set actually comes with multiple ones inside of it. It unzips all the way. And the great thing about it, I'm gonna show you this, is when you put them in, it makes everything really compress easily. When you're gonna pull it out, it has a handle. You just grab it. You know all your jeans are in one. You know all of your uh, PJs are in another. You know all of your bras and underwear. They have different sizes. This is a smaller one. Then there's some ones. I tend to put bras and underwear in a longer one like this. It is very easy to find what you need when you get to your destination. And what I tend to do with these when I have pulled everything out when I get there is then I use one of them to put all of my laundry in. So anything that when I get home is going right into the laundry goes in one of these, usually the biggest one, I use it to just put everything into as I go. So all my laundry is in one space. So that is the basis of my clothing. Then as far as my shoes, usually my shoes I put in my duffel bag because it's much easier. They move around a little bit easier. The stacking cubes and the flat items in the suitcase make it much easier. Now with traveling, if you are trying to carry on, you can technically only have one quart per person. How I get around it when I am carrying on, I generally have a suitcase and a duffel bag, right? So I put one clear plastic container with my liquids in each bag because they're not sitting there looking to make sure that like which bags are with who they're just watching as it goes through to make sure that you don't have more than you should is simply pull the liquids out put it in one of the bins that goes through before the suitcase then your next suitcase then another bin with your other set of clear ziploc bag whatever have you i'm going to get into that in a minute as well so that way again it almost looks like two separate people going through, if that makes sense. Um, this is just what has worked for me. I cannot get away with one bag. It just does not work for me with my skincare. My makeup, I'm actually surprisingly okay with because of the fact that I have been using Lime Life products now and they are actually a cream-based product in a little square. My makeup stays where it is. I am going to go through next and talk to you guys about my makeup and then about my liquids. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about are little things to help as far as electronics. So as far as makeup, the first couple things is this is how I store my brushes on a daily basis. They are in a brush roll. I got it on Etsy, they have all different ones. These are the brushes I use every single day. When I travel, if I have a carry-on, I don't worry about it. It just goes in whichever bag, it ties up, it stays fine. But when I am checking a bag, and this is an interesting thing, when I am checking a bag, I keep this in whatever bag I am carrying on, the duffel bag, the purse, whatever it is, because my theory is this, when I get somewhere, if my luggage is lost for any certain reason, I can go to the drugstore and find inexpensive makeup that I can make work. If I don't have my brushes, <laughs> all hell is gonna break loose because I am gonna be going crazy trying to figure it out I rely on these so much. So if I'm not checking a bag, it just goes in any of the bags. It doesn't really matter which one. 
on to makeup. Now, this is what I have been using currently, but on my next two trips, I just ordered a new makeup case off of Amazon, and I'll try and put a picture here. It is really cool, and I'm excited to try it out, but for now, this is what I've been using. Uh, this exact one is not sold at Sephora anymore. It is made by Sephora, but here's one of the key things that I always, 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 I have an old mirror. This is a ratty looking old mirror. The stand broke off. It's been melted by curling irons, but it is a magnifying mirror and a regular mirror. I always have this with me. Have you ever been in a hotel bathroom and either the lighting sucks or there's no magnifying one and you're trying to do like lashes or lip liner or eyeliner or anything? This is always, always, always in here. So typically in here, I have all of my makeup products. I don't pull anything out as far as liquids because I really don't carry liquids with me anymore. So on to actual liquids and your port container and travel and all of that. So this is what I use. This is from Target. I have two of them. It is that Sonia Kashuk, Kashuk, I can never say that right line. And so here's the tip or trick with this is technically, yes, you can just use a Ziploc. Everybody's probably like, why aren't you just using a Ziploc? Because a Ziploc is exactly three quarts. This fits more than what I can fit in a three quart, but it's still close enough to the size of the three quart that it's not going to get flagged. I also love the fact that it zips open and closed. It makes it so everything is secure in here. It's the, the Ziploc thing isn't going to pop on me. Also, if you look, a typical Ziploc bag is very straight. This kind of bows out at the bottom, which gives you a little bit of extra space. Now, a few tips and tricks I have learned is any items that you use on a regular basis that you love. Go and look and try and find a trial size version of that. I always have trial size versions with me. So like the cap fell off of this one, my hairspray, my dry shampoo. Um, I always buy trial size of like makeup removers, my cleansing balm from Colleen Rothschild, and then like my Monate oil, everything is in trial size. But here is another thing to keep in mind. A lot of my liquids that are my skincare are actually under the 3.4 ounces that you are allowed. A couple tips and tricks I tend to do is one, you can buy these refillable little plastic bottles, again from Target, I think it's 99 cents. These are products that I have not been able to find a trial size of. Um, another thing that I do is I keep old sample bottles of spray bottles, like this used to be a face spray. I have my Rejuvenique spray in this, I clean it out really well, and then I just have a small version of it with the spray ready to go. I just put a little post-it note with the name around it so I know what it is. So all of these are in here. They are secure. They are good to go. I can fit some extra stuff in here. Uh, a couple other things that I tend to do is I take samples of face washes. Like we all have a ton of samples, right? I generally take things like my body wash. My body wash doubles as to wash my body and I actually shave with that as well. I take a disposable razor because I can throw it away before I leave. So those are my tips and tricks as far as actually packing my liquids, whether it is going to be checked or whether it's actually going as a carry-on as well. Now, a couple things I also want to touch base on that are items that I always take with me when I'm traveling that save me every single time. One of them is this plug, and I got it on Amazon, and I have my wires hooked up to it still. It folds into this little box, but it has four USBs. So there's no fighting for plugs. There's no trying to figure out where there's a USB outlet. There's no taking like four or five of those little squares that come with everything. You simply plug them all in this way. Here's something that this goes to that I always take when I travel with me. And I have a couple different sizes of it. And this is an external charging battery, okay? Um, you can buy these on Amazon. These you need the cord for. Then I have ones like this that you can just, these actually have the cords inside of them. You just pop it out and it has one for an Android and one for an Apple. This is easier to throw in your purse. This is heavy and bigger, but these I tend to use like when I'm waiting at the airport. So I'm not fighting for a spot near a plug. This I can just recharge when I get home. It has actually three chargers on it. They're all different sizes, but I always have these with me when I travel. And actually one of these is always in my purse anyway. So these have been all of the items and how I tend to pack 
whether I'm carrying on or checking a bag, what makes it easier for me, and the tips and tricks that have worked for me. If you are not yet following my channel, I would love if you click that little red button and subscribe down below, and also click the notification bell so that you can get notified anytime I have a new video like this up. And as always, everything that I am wearing will be listed down in the description box under what I'm wearing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them down below. Let me know anything that you want to know about. I will try and answer for you. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and sticking with me and have a great day. Bye.